Hello, fellow Mega Tennis. I hope you're having a scream of a time. It's that time of year, and whether or not you like frights, I think we can all agree that 2020 was a hellish time. <laughs> but since none of us can go out for Halloween this year, I thought I'd bring the screams to you. Today, boys and ghouls and non-binary beasties, I present to you a spooky list of spooky. I want to talk about some demons that I like. And I picked a few fiends because nothing is scarier than bones. Skeletons are even scarier. <laughs> so let's talk about the fiends of the apocalypse. So fiends are generally rare encounters of demons. They tend to be a little difficult, if you know what I mean. And they also tend to be a little bit menacing. So let's start off this apocalyptic discussion with a group of fiends that are closely associated with each other. These are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. In chapter 6 of the book of Revelations, we learn about God's right hand. Sealed by seven, uh, well, seals. The Lamb of God and the Lion of Judah open the first four of the seven seals. This summons four entities who ride out on four horses. White, red, black, and pale. Pale is not white though. We'll talk about that later. Ezekiel describes them as sword, famine, wild beasts, and plague. We get more in the book itself. The first horseman is the white horse, carrying a bow and given a crown, and he symbolizes conquest. The second carries a sword and rides a red horse, and he is the creator of war. The third is a food merchant riding a black horse. This symbolizes famine. And the fourth is a pale green horse. Quirky enough, death rides the horse along with Hades. Don't be confused. Hades refers to the spirits of the dead, not exactly the god of death or the place of death from Greek mythology. But sometimes it also represents that as well, depending on which interpretation of the Bible you are looking at. Then I saw when the lamb broke one of the seven seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked and behold a white horse, and he sat on it, had a bow, and a crown given to him. And he went out conquering to conquer. I find it interesting delving into theology. Some thought that the white rider was Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. I'm not deep enough to explain why that is. Other interpretations though say that it's the Antichrist or it's a literal infection because it is also described as the pestilence. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. And another, a red horse, went out, and to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from earth, and that men would slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. The Red Rider represents war, though apparently it's a civil war rather than a physical war, despite the sword and, yeah, the stuff they say in the Bible. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come. I looked and behold a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand, and I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A cord of wheat. The third rider represents famine, carries scales meant to weigh grain, and that passage actually has some crazy expensive grain. A denarius is essentially an entire day's wage for the average person. The line about not damaging oil and wine is possibly referring to how high-end items will be still there but essential items, such as bread, will not be available to most people. When the Lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come. I looked and behold an ashen horse, 
and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilence and the wild beast of the earth. Unlike the other three, Death isn't carrying an object or a weapon. Death carries Hades, which must be hard to depict, so instead it's usually a scythe. The bizarre color descriptor is pale, and that's supposed to represent death. Sadly, after all this, Kaneko doesn't have much to say about these designs of these four are demons. He mentions that the Red Rider's horse is a Chinese breed, and he mentions a movie from 1921 called The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. I looked up the art, and I don't really know why he references that movie at all. These aren't the only Revelations demons, Slayers. Let's look at Trumpeter. Trumpeter is weird because it represents one of the seven angels, or possibly all of them, who blow their horn during the apocalypse. Now I read through the passages regarding the trumpets, and I read it hoping to understand it, but... Uh, but I didn't understand it. So I decided to consult the Kaneko works. In this book, Kaneko cites chapters 8 through 11 of Revelations, and his summary is basically that the angel blows a trumpet each time a catastrophe occurs. He mentions the angels who do this are supposed to have four wings and hands and feet long enough to reach from heaven to earth. That probably explains why the position is with the feet upwards in a floating position and the four wings with two on its back and two on the trumpet. He cites Israfil as the inspiration for this design. He's the angel who blows the trumpet to signal the Judgment Day in the Quran, although I don't think the Quran actually references him by name. The way his hairs and rolls are meant to represent a great musician, though he doesn't mention who exactly. And the trumpet is likely based on the rag dung, or a similar straight trumpet. I tried to figure out the symbolism behind the trumpet and I just couldn't really find anything beyond that. And the same with the triangle and circles on the robes, though they look remotely similar to the cross Erminei, which doesn't seem to have any significance, but I'm not sure. The ornate designs on the trumpet are, like I said, lost on me, because Kaneko doesn't explain why he did that. And that's really all there is about Trumpeter. And last, but certainly not least, we have Mother Harlot. The cool thing about this apocalyptic fiend is that she is a twofer, one being the harlot herself, and the other being the beast. Let's talk about the Lady. Babylon the Great, or the Whore of Babylon, described in Revelations. And this is what they say about her. Mystery. Babylon the Great. The mother of prostitutes and abominations of the earth. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. I tried to read about who or what Babylon the Great represents, but it's very esoteric. It seems to be somewhat debated as well. Just know she may or may not represent idolatry or idol worship, and not the world's oldest profession but that's just one of the many theories. And even in the Bible, she's riding the beast, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Kaneko's interpretation is pretty one-to-one, -one. purple and red and gold, etc., etc. The goblet is steaming, which I found odd, and according to Kaneko, his version of the Mother Harlot is holding a goblet full of blood of the saints and witnesses of Jesus. I always thought her head was a spooky skull, but Kaneko says that that's not actually true, that it's actually a skull mask and on her forehead underneath the mask is her name. Interestingly, he doesn't have any commentary about the beast, and the beast is pretty wild because there's actually two or more beasts that came from this part of the Bible. The most popular being the two, one from the sea and one that comes from the earth. I say or more because I've read that there's two, three, or even four beasts in the Revelations, and from the passages that I read, I don't think that it's four necessarily, but these are also translations of a million years old text. Not literally millions, but whatever. So the beast that she rides is being described as having seven heads, ten horns, and is some kind of dragon thing that's red. I saw a weird comparison to leopards in the Bible quote that I was looking at, and I found that interesting, as that would probably explain the diamond pattern on the body of Kaneko's interpretation. Another little detail I thought was neat was that the diamonds that each beast has is numbered one through seven on its heads. And that's all the spooky fiends who are involved in the apocalypse. Did you have a hell of a time? <laughs> or did you not? 
If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe and maybe throw the dog a bone. <laughs> As for me, I enjoyed this little thing I did and maybe I'll do more videos like it. Would you like that? Hmm? If you would, then let me know in the comments down below. Have a spooky Halloween, fellow Megatetis. <laughs> Thank you.